Hi, I'm JC, the creative director and founder of Nova Quark. Today is a big day for us. Dual Universe is an old gamer's dream. We wanted to get back to the roots of what an MMO is supposed to be, a massively multiplayer online game. In Dual Universe, everybody plays in the same world at the same time. No boundaries, no instances, no zone, just one single shard universe. And it changes everything, because everything you do matters, because you're part of a collective story in a world that keeps evolving over time. The other thing in Dual Universe is that you can build anything you want. Spaceships, cities, orbital stations, there are no limit in size to what you can actually build. All this together makes Dual Universe a game about emergent gameplay, a game where you can actually rebuild civilization together. Players are in control. This is your world. Hi guys, I'm Alex, the producer on Dual Universe. And like many game developers know, making a game is one of the hardest things in the world. But it's also a true product of passion, and to do this, we assembled an amazing team to work on Dual Universe, and today we'll be telling you more about our project. During my years at Ubisoft, I had the chance of working with small and large teams, talented people working on game franchises as Watch Dogs and Ghost Recon, and it was really an amazing experience. And taking all of this with us, we're gonna be building an amazing game in Dual Universe, and today we'll be telling you more about our game. In a single shard universe, everybody plays in the same world at the same time. There are no instances, no zones, no loading screen, and it changes everything because everything you do matters. It has consequences. Exactly, and imagine you're involved in the spaceship battle. Winning or losing might not affect only you. It might affect the balance of power in the universe. Yeah, or if you build a great spaceship that gets successful in the in-game markets, that might actually impact the strategies of combat uh, in fleet battles. And when you're exploring distant planet, if you discover a rare material source, this could be a game changer for your organization. Everything you do matters in a single shard universe. Uh, you're part of a collective story. And that's why it was so important for us to develop the technology that enables that before anything else. Hi, my name is Etienne. I'm the lead network developer on Joel Universe. I've been working for 10 years on large scale distributed systems in MMO games as well as non gaming applications. All these systems were pretty complex, but Joel Universe is really on a very different scale. We want all the players to be able to connect to a single world without instancing or zoning. We had to push the state of the art in several ways. For instance, we had to create this dynamic space splitting algorithm, level of details, optimizations, transparent server migrations, as well as specific handling for identity zones. We also worked hard with our Voxel team to correctly replicate uh, terrain and construct uh, additions on the servers. The result is a world where thousands of players can freely gather in close by areas such as cities or large bottles. I don't think we've ever seen that in a game, at least not at this scale. Hi, I'm Guillaume. I'm leading the graphic team. As you can imagine, Dual Universe is quite the challenge in terms of rendering techniques, and even more since we are trying to make a truly massive, single shard, realistic universe. To do that, for us, the main challenge is to make it continuous. So no loading screen and everything consistent from the ground to space. To achieve this, not only do we use the state-of-the-art load technology that most common games use, but we had to implement our own new smart technologies to solve these problems. For instance, we developed something like continuous asynchronous texture baking, which is baking all what you see from the ground in texture so that you can have a synthetic view of it from space. The building gameplay in Dual Universe is a crucial and quite unique feature. You collect resources, you transform them, you use them to craft components, and then you can build and assemble functional constructs like a house, a spaceship, or even an orbital station. And there are several steps involved in creating a construct. The first is deploying what we call a core unit. It creates a local frame for your construct, something that will be detached from the planet. Then from this core unit, you can start to deploy materials to sculpt them into a shape. Uh, that is a kind of superstructure for your construct. And from there, what you want to do is add a basic functionality for your construct. To do this, you can craft or buy things we call elements. It could be a cockpit, a weapon, or maybe a radar for your spaceship and you can then deploy it on your construct shape. 
And the last step is to script all the interactions between these different elements. So we'll make it easy for you if you just want your ship to fly, for example, with an automatic configurator that is going to look at your ship and create the script for you. But if you want to go further, you can actually go deep inside the scripting and modify all the interactions the way you want. But for those of you who want to dig deeper, we'll give you access to what's behind the scenes, which are Lua scripts. You can change them, modify them as you like to basically make the construct do whatever you want. Yes, you, you can script, for example, your own AI or your defense mechanism for your outpost or your ship. However, you will have to be online and near your construct for that to work because everything is going to run locally on your machine. One more thing, when you're done building your construct, you can create a blueprint out of it. A blueprint is something you can use to rebuild your construct through a factory unit, for instance, or maybe sell blueprint copies on the in-game markets. And this is going to be big for business. Hi, I'm Nicolas, lead gameplay developer. I create with my team all the gameplay features that you will use to shape the world. For example, we are working here on the multi-user building and fine-tuning all the network interpolations. We want a realistic economy that is player-driven, with real sell and buy orders and an equilibrium that establishes itself according to supply and demand. And we'll begin with having NPCs acting on the market at first. It will solidify the trading at the beginning of the game. However, our ultimate goal is to remove them and let the players trade for themselves. You can set your markets wherever you want. It's completely player-driven. Uh, you will have also to connect containers and energy to them, to power them, that will define actually how big they can become. Yes, and because they have a physical existence in the world, when you place an order in a distant market, you'll actually have to go there to retrieve it from the container. Yes, or pay someone to do it for you. There is a lot of potential for emergent activities there. Uh, the fact also that markets are localized is also going to help to specialize them depending on the region and the danger zones, how difficult it is to get there, for example. Exactly, like in the real world. The other reason why markets are important is that it will allow players to specialize into what they like to do. You can sell your mining production, you can buy crafted elements from other players. You'll never have to do everything on your own. Uh, just like in the real world, you can trade your skills for the things you need. The PvP combat system is going to have two aspects. The first one is going to be avatars versus avatars, and then constructs versus constructs, like ships battles for instance. The construct versus constructs is going to be a stretch goal, so we'll start with building the avatar combat system first. And the avatar combat system uh, is going to be a classical uh, armor shield protection system coupled with specialized weapons. It won't be a reflex based uh, FPS style uh, combat, but rather a lock and fire approach where the outcome is going to be decided based on stats. Yes, exactly like the future ship battle system is going to be a lock and fire system as well. Now, because uh, ships are construct like uh, any other, uh, you can have an inside and you can have a crew on board with lots of people involved with specialized uh, activities like taking care of the weaponry or the repair system, for example. Or FTL drives or any other functionality. What we hope to achieve is to make you know, large battles uh, between lots of ships, you know, being like in a, in a movie, you know, when you're inside the battleship and you feel it and you live it from the inside. And at the same time, it's going to be perfectly valid to also fly with a single ship that's maybe faster and part of a strategy to harass larger cruisers or maybe target specific defenses. The game will not be all about PvP free for all. To start with, you are all beginning uh, in the same location, what is called uh, the Ark Ship. And this Ark Ship is actually located into a safe zone that is about 20 kilometers wide, uh, that is also indestructible. And nothing bad can happen to you within this safe zone. However, if you choose to cross that limit, you're going to have to start being careful. And you better know what you're doing. So, of course, interesting resources will not be inside the safe zone. So somebody, at some point, has to go out and explore. And we plan on having other safe zones to be discovered on other planets, so you will always have options. By the way, discovering safe zones will be part of the reasons why you want to do exploration. Um, we also plan to make uh, this uh, safe zone story uh, related to the backstory and the game lore. And it's not going to be the only way you can protect your assets. You'll also be able to give them access rights, which won't be easy to break. Yes, and of course, 
uh, you can create uh, sort of artificial safe zones, we call them protection bubbles, that will be extremely hard to destroy, but not indestructible in proportion to how much energy you, you put in them to power them. And a very powerful marketplace will have the ability to finance a really strong protection bubble using the fees he's collecting from the trading activity. Territories are a really important strategic element of the gameplay, especially for organizations. The surface of planets will be divided into hexagonal tiles of about one kilometer size uh, that you can claim, you or your organization, by deploying a territory unit on them. Territory units are going to be uh, very expensive and hard to craft elements. And once you own a territory tile, you can set access rights on it, like for instance who has the right to mine, to build in it, or maybe just to enter. And at some point it will be also possible to create taxes on the territory, so that you can finance global defense systems or major infrastructures. Now, territories can also be conquered simply by destroying the territory unit, or hacking it, or maybe just buying it from its owner. Mm. This gameplay is complex and is still in discussion with the community. But we want to make territories a tool for organizations to be able to enforce uh, collective orientations and politics on land. As far as player customization goes, we'll start by giving players the ability to change the gender and also the main color of the standard outfit. But this is only going to be the first step. Yeah, in the long run, we plan, of course, to add more options, but at this stage, we have to make uh, choices on what we implement first. The other aspect of character customization that is important is the skill system we have. Regarding player specialization, we decided to implement a skill tree that gives more variety, more options for the players to specialize their characters in whatever activity they like from building to mining, trading or combat. Learning a skill takes actual time, uh, even when you're offline. And the more advanced the skill, the longer it's going to take time. So you have to plan carefully. But at the same time, uh, you can always learn new skills to reorient the specialization of your character. So nothing is static. Organizations in your universe are the generalization of what you find under the name of uh, corps or guilds in, in other games. At the basis, an organization is a group of players that will be able to decide how they share power. You have on one side the legates that are a bit like the owners, and on the other side you have members that will uh, occupy functions that are defined by delegates. And organizations are not only made of players, they can also be a collection of other organizations. Yes, so you can have things like uh, alliances or more hierarchical uh, structures like uh, cities, nations or planet governments. And we don't have a set of predefined types of organizations. Instead, we give the players different types of tools to create their own organizations with what we call a rights and duties management system. We will, of course, uh, offer some predefined uh, templates of organizations, the more usual one like a democratic nation, a dictatorship, or a corporation, or a guild of pirates. Uh, but people who want to actually go deeper and try to create their own political systems will be able to do so. And by the way, you can check out our website, community.dualthegame.com, where you can create your own organizations and start recruiting players as we speak. This morning, we checked the website and we already have more than 360 uh, organizations created, with some of them having more than 50 members. Hi, I'm Ludovic, community manager at Nova Quark, also known as Nizalta on the forum. My work consists of answering your questions, gathering and transmitting all your feedback and suggestions to the dev team. So don't hesitate to join us on the forum and social media. Emergent gameplay means that the kind of things you will encounter in the game, like uh, ships, uh, cities, uh, quests or stories, uh, are not created by us, but by you, the players. Uh, we may have to add a little bit of content at the beginning to bootstrap, uh, but the spirit is that you are in control. Yes, and to make this possible, we create a set of simple gameplay mechanics and uh, building blocks that we give to you, the players, to recombine as you see fit and express your full creativity. We also work on uh, tweaking the game design so that certain outcomes have a better chance to happen. For example, we want to have cities, so we will make sure that uh, building a city is a smart move for players. But ultimately, it may or may not happen depending on what you want to do. And let's take uh, Quest for example. Uh, at some point we plan to add job boards where you can check out the jobs that are offered by other players or maybe other organizations. Uh, suppose for example, uh, an organization wants to build a Death Star. I'm sure somebody will want to do that, right? 
Uh, so this is a pharaonic project that will have a huge demand on resources and planification, securing also the construction site, maybe spying to get information about local you know, planets and politics. Uh, so th there will be literally work for thousands of players that are just coming from this goal uh, that this organization has to build the Death Star. So it's all emergent. And the kind of quest that would emerge from the wish to build the Death Star is going to be more engaging and more powerful than any quest that we'll be able to do on our side. Because it will come from you, the players. This is just an example. We could give you many more illustrations uh, about industry, exploration or warfare. Ultimately, we don't know what's going to be. Dune Universe is your world. It's your responsibility to take it wherever you want to. We are assembled an amazing team to create Dual Universe. Let me introduce you to those guys. Um, before Dual Universe, my background was in AI and robotics. I'm a science guy. I did a PhD in robot language evolution uh, and I directed to AI research lab. I think what, what interests me is the idea that you can take uh, simple elementary building blocks that have the potential to recombine uh, together to create uh, surprising and emergent structures. And I think this idea is at the heart of the game design of Dual Universe. Hello, I'm Benoit. I'm in charge of operations here at Novacqua. I've been working with Jean-Christophe for about 10 years now. We first launched a company named Ghost Eye in 2006. It was developing software on AI for robotics. And then Ghost Eye has been acquired by Alebron Robotics, the maker of the NAO robot. At that moment, we thought, why not create a new innovative company and why not in a field that both love? video games. We wanted to bring something new on the table. And JC came with this amazing prototype of Dual Universe. When I saw it, I said, let's do it. Hi, I'm Frédéric, lead of the Voxel and Procedural team. We try to make a beautiful world that you can freely edit and modify. So, here is an example on the screen. You see a moon. So I'm first landing on it. As a player, you will be able to shape the planet the way you want, here. Hi, I'm Ryan, Senior UX and Interactive Designer here at Novaqua. My job is to take the complex interfaces and turn them into something both usable and cool. Currently working on the first person view of a user interface so you can decide what items you are placing in and out of the world. Dual Universe aimed to be a revolutionary take on the MMO genre, enough to say that it's hard to finance. We are an independent company. So far we got our supports from daring and visionary investors. That has brought us to where we are now and helped us to demonstrate that we were able to develop the kind of technologies that are necessary for Dual Universe to work. But this is just the first step. We need your support. We want Dual Universe to be community driven not driven by some uh, publisher or investor's agenda. The stronger the community support we will have, the more independent we can remain and the more we can develop the game we all like. Dual Universe is a game made by gamers, for gamers. By backing Dual Universe, you're making a statement and you're helping to bring to life what could be perhaps one of the most innovative sci-fi MMO of the time. We believe this has the potential to redefine the genre and you can be part of those who help it to make it happen. Thank you. Thank you all for your support. Let's do this together and see you soon. Enjoy the universe!